Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? I hope this finds you well. So let's begin today with the information for the day of the toroid, um, the toroid in the to close the mental week, the mind week of Aquarius. Let's just explain a, a joke because uh, as a as a gift for this year, my friends gave me this this T-shirt, um, which is from a humor um, program here in, in Spain that I hear all the time. The main uh, comic um, um, he did he did a, he was trying to say namaste and he said samante and so because of a mistake he <laughs> they created this so for us it's really funny and yeah so <clears throat> but mostly the Spanish people knows it so so today our topic is the constellation of Draco. So first of all, what I would love to explain is to take away some of the myths that we usually have around this constellation, because usually we can relate this constellation with um, the dragons and the the bad people, the reptilians and, and so on. So I would love to take all these myths around for a moment so we can clean the idea of this constellation because it is not really that. So first of all, to understand this, that usually when we um, when we say Draco, which in Latin means dragon, we usually um, have this idea that um, everything that is connected to a dragon or a reptilian will be connected to this constellation. So remember that the names of the constellations had no relation with what happened in the stars, as we have spoken already, that the constellations, um, the these constellations um, are named like that because of our point of views, but not because of the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not because they really are living uh, or those um, stories are happening in in those constellations mm -hmm. what I want to wanted to, to to explain first is that we have to take out the idea that the people that lives in that constellation maybe are called the draconian people but it doesn't mean that they had the shape of a of a dra dragon or <coughs> or reptiles mm -hmm. when we talk about the 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 constellations like saying for example um like like saying from the dragon constellation they are coming this uh reptilian beings that are trying to control us and so on we are just living through our point of view which is the perception of psychology from this world from our point of uh, psychological point of this planet we project this idea in mythology we are living through mythologies mm? so we usually project what we believe from the stars into the history of the stars which is not exactly like that it's not related to that and um for example when we speak about pleiades uh usually we think that they are these enlightened beings that helps us to find the path to the light but this is because in the history this um 
these uh, beings, the, 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 play, the people from Pleiades, um, sorry, the Pleiades were seven sisters related, related with the Muses. Okay, so, um, so that's why we live in that perception um, of the skies. So when we speak about the stars, we are not speaking about what is happening in those stars. We are usually speaking about our perception and point of view of our vision of the stars. Hmm? <clears throat> so also something important because for sure you have heard or read about these concepts in, in YouTube or whatever, um, that we usually project into the stars ideas that we have from here. Like, for example, we, we used to say, from this constellation comes the good people, from this constellation comes the bad people. And that is really weird to say, because we can compare that when we say, for example, all the Argentinians are like this, all the Spanish people are like that, all the North American people is like that, okay? So kind of if we say this country, all the people is the bad ones, and that country, all the people are the good ones. And it's not like this, it's not how it works, okay? So imagine that we project that into a whole constellation. And the constellation is not even seen as a constellation from their point of views, okay? So I know that here on Earth, we are very racist. So let's try not to make this racism something um, from the whole galaxy. Let's go into the, into why, why the ancient ones used to call dragon to this constellation. Not, not because the people from there was looking like dragons, but because for the ancient ones, the dragon was the one that was looking straight, okay? And the constellation of the dragon is the one that was taking care, looking for each one of the constellations. Hmm? Be because of this, they call the, the constellation the dragon taking care of the whole sky. And why, why the dragon was taking care of the, of the sky? Because dragon comes from the Greek word drakein. Gra drakein in Greek means the one that watch straight, that sees deep. Hmm? That's what it means. So drakon is the, is the adjective of drakein. So dra drakon is the one that stares, the one that looks that look and stares straight to something. So that's why dracon is the word for the guardian, the one that takes care of something, that protects something, that is watching to take care of something. Hmm? That's what we um, that what in Greece they call. Um, uh, they call uh, dracon, hmm? which is the origin of dragon. Dragon. So <clears throat> basically, for the ancient ones, the dragon was not a creature that was, I don't know, like, like a weird creature, but the dragon was the guardian of a city, the guardian of something, okay? That's what a dragon was, really. The one that took care of something. So why this constellation was called the dragon? Because this constellation was the only one, is the only one that is constantly fixed in the sky. And now we are going to try to understand why. <laughs> and that's why I did this little drawing. So this is the north hemisphere in the boreal constellations. Hmm? So I, I draw it right now because it would be very difficult to see this, okay, the reflection and so on. So this constellation here is the one that is the most important for us today because this is the, uh, the um, Ursa Minor and this star here is Polaris. Oh, no funciona.
analysis. There you have Polaris in Ursa Minor constellation. Remember that here we have a circle, and this is the circle where the Earth is spinning in 26,000 years. This is the precession of the equinoxes, okay? The precession of the equinoxes when the Earth is spinning like this, moving the North, uh, the North Pole, <coughs> it takes 26 years to make the whole turn. But this whole turn now takes us to Polaris. But if we go back in time to the Egyptian time, we have Alpha Draconis, this star here. And then we go back in time and we have Hercules. And then we, have, we go 12,000 years ago and we have Vega in the Lyra constellation. And then going back again to Cygnus and Cepheus and again Polaris. So all this turn around, yes, is 26,000 years. It takes 26,000 years. And here you have the polarity from Polaris in the star and Vega, yeah? All the constellations that we spoke about, Ursa Minor, uh, Cepheus, Cygnus, um, Lyra, Hercules, okay, and Draco. Hmm? So this is the whole circle. Look into this. If the Earth is here, if the Earth if if the Earth is here, so the North Pole is spinning, moving around doing the whole circle of the history. And it's pointing with the axis to one star that is not fixed, it's moving through history. So all this story of 26,000 years, it's moving the axis of the Earth, but it creates a circle in which we have the center of all this time and space. Which constellation is that? Draco the Draco constellation. So in this circle, if I try to connect and find the center, I will find that here I have the face, the head of the dragon, the neck of the dragon, and then the chest of the dragon, and the whole body with the tail. So in the center, what I find, the heart of the dragon. Hmm? So, as you see, the dragon, this constellation, is the heart of everything. From its heart, it, it connects all the times and all the spaces through time and space. So, this heart of the dragon is the one that is staring constantly to everything, every constellation, every star, straight into them. And that's why this is called the dragon. Because dragon means the one that is staring, looking. Hmm? So once we said this, we can understand that astronomically and um, etymolog etymologically, the dragon has nothing in common with the mythology. Okay, so astronomy and etymology in one side and mythology in the other side. Now we have this division of the two things. We can understand that mythology, the vision of the mythology is not related to the way of astronomy and, and, um, and, and the etymology of the word. Why they call it like this? Hmm? Uh, so mythology is much more related to the psychology. So the mythology tells us that we interpret the things through our psychology. Psychology comes from the Greek word psyche, that means soul. So it's the soul, the memory of the soul that perceives through the archetypes that we have learned through history. It's all about the illusions the illusions of our point of views, that's the soul. So the point of views of the soul creates these archetypes that are creating the myths, so mythology. Hmm? 
Uh, that's why we project to the constellations the psychology of our myths. Okay, you got it? In the same way as we have said that the constellations, the 12 constellations, the zodiac signs are related to the process of humans and agriculture of a group of people, okay, in, in the world. Okay, so let's go to understand the next. So let's talk about mythology so we can understand what our soul is perceiving. Hmm? To, in order to understand the mythology of the dragon, we should not think that dragon comes, the, the image that we have from the dragon comes from the word dragon. It comes from something that is way older than that, which is the traditions of the totemic culture, the totems. The totems come from the shaman culture that were animists. Animists um, are those who follow the things that move because anima means things that are moving, that animated, the things that are animated. So that's why they were following animals. So the animist people were those who were following the attributes of the things that were moving around the world. So that's why they, um, they had their gods and goddesses in the, in the animal and vegetal kingdom. Mm. So uh, they were following the attributes so they could become and handle this, <coughs> these um, attributes of the nature. Mm. So that's why for us, we call that animism. They call each one of these uh, animals or, or, or plants like totems. Mm. So they had to learn from each one of them so we could understand ourselves better. So what they did once was to put all the attributes of all these animals together as one, creating a new kind of being that could have all the different attributes of each one of the totems of the world. So what they did was to put the different plants and different animals and they created this idea in the imaginary world not related with something real, but related with the idea of God. So they created God. Hmm? They manifested the idea of God in this being, hmm? in this great being. So, so this being had all the potentials in one. It was only one being. So for some cultures, um, for some cultures, this being, this divine being, has all the had all the the information of the universe, all the attributes. So he it was a good being teaching humans how to handle those attributes. And for other cultures, this being was something horrible and something really bad. Why? Because it has all the attributes ad attributes, and if the humans were not right. So it would use its attributes to kill them and destroy. Mm. So from this idea, we had a totem that unified all the potentials as a good one, and another one that unified all the potentials as the bad one. Mm. The version of Africa is the Sphinx. The Sphinx is this uh, animal, this totem that put together different other attributes of animals with wings, with pods, with different head of animals. So all together, they, um, this Sphinx is the one um, doing the exams to the humans. So to see if they are able on, or not to, uh, to handle these attributes. Mm -hmm. So through the history, when the people from the Mediterranean Sea start to go to Asia and take all these totemic ideas, they mixed the chimera and the, <clears throat> the sphinx from the Mediterranean cultures with the Asian cultures all together. So now, these concepts of all these uh, beings were seen from the point of view of the totems. And this means that the totems had um, 
had these attributes that they can use it as tools, as a good one or bad one. But the bad one, the negative one, was really not taken as a as something bad, but as a but as a weapon that was trying to protect the essence that was inside. So the tool that was a the tool of the the attribute of the totem was used also as a weapon to protect themselves. We can relate that with our uh, immunological system, the immune system. We can relate that with our um, same body trying to protect the things from the outside. Mm -hmm. So this idea creates the concept that this being is protecting something that is holy. That is something that it must be protected within. So this idea of the protection creates the stories in between the people that tells about these monsters, these totems that take care, protect and guard the treasures that are within. Hmm? Do you follow the story? <clears throat> and this is why in Greece, they start to call these guardians as dragons, dracon. Hmm? And here comes in the whole Europe, the traditions of the dragon. Uh, usually in the, in the past, they started to tell these stories that about the dragons that in order to for you to get what is behind the dragon what is protected by the dragon which is a treasure that is inside you have to become a knight that fight against the dragon and when you fight against the dragon you will get what is behind gold power normally a woman for that time but now we are going to try to understand it the significance of this the goal is uh, is referring to the philosophical stone which is to be able to enlighten in matter to accomplish enlightenment in here to take power to become king or queen is to restore the ability to rule my own life, to be able to decide my own destiny. And the women, the princes, usually represent the soul, the sensibility, the ability to have memory, to, to awake the potential of love. Hmm? So the story says that the knight, which is the ego, the personality, has to face each one of the spines of the dragon, which are the different parts of the self, the different attributes of the totem, in order to integrate them. So when I, when I stop fighting the dragon and I dare to see the dragon, the dragon into its eyes, which is the symbology of dracon, that is to see straight to the eyes. And you see the soul of the dragon, you see the princess. And through the princess, you find the heart of the dragon, which is the soul. The dragon, the heart of the dragon. And when you position yourself in the heart of the dragon, you can see out of time and out of space because the heart of the dragon doesn't have space nor time. The divine presence, I am, Jo Soy, here and now. This precious gem of the universe, the heart of the dragon, this diamond, in the center of everything that represents the I am 
is covered by this dragon that represents all our fears, all the things that we hate, that we try to fight with. Our darkness. And that's why throughout all the history, we have been fighting against our monsters. We have been creating the idea that the snakes, the reptilians, the dragon, dragonians, and the bad ones, and the demons, and so on, were trying to fight against us. And we have to fight back. But this idea is the one that the system wants for us to believe. Why? Because the light of transformation is surrounded by the dragon. And you cannot fight the dragon because it was designed to protect it. Each part of the attributes of the dragon is fighting back. It was designed to protect the heart. So the only way you can go into the heart of the dragon is if you see straight into its eyes. Discover the soul. If you stare like a knight and you face to look into your own demons, to rescue the soul, your own soul. So this is why the knight, the ego, is trying to look for a purpose through 26,000 years, moving around, looking for something new. But the dragon is constantly up there, looking straight to the eyes to see if we keep looking for a purpose outside or we find the love within. Maybe the constellation of Draco now has a different perspective. So now remember that every time that you face something that hurts, that you fear, <coughs> it's just the dragon trying to protect itself. And we also have this dragon within ourselves. This dragon is what we call the Kundalini, the snake that activates the inner power. And when we accomplish to activate it, it opens its feathers like Quetzalcoatl, the feather snake. And it opens the wings to fly. So this dragon that we have inside is surrounding and protecting the genes, the diamonds that we have within the chakras. So it's protecting this holy information of the essence and it goes and surround them and protect it so we can be still. But what happened? If we are incoherent, this dragon will protect itself. So this dragon was protecting us in three levels. In our actions, emotions, and thoughts. But if the dragon feels that we are not really well, it will protect itself through reaction in our body, through traumas in our soul, and through beliefs in our mind. From what is this dragon trying to protect us? from our own incapacity. So this dragon is not protecting only from stuff from the outside, it's usually protecting us from our own incapacities. It's the incapacity that we have to handle the resources that we have within. In the same way as our own dragon, is protecting our own essence by the reactions, by the traumas, and by the beliefs. The earth also has this dragon protecting itself, its essence, by reactions, thoughts, and uh, beliefs, and, and traumas. I wanted to say something more, and I forgot. So just to remind you and us all that um, 
that in order to work with the earth and how to heal this planet, we first have to do it with ourselves, with our own dragon, to watch straight to our own dragon into its eyes. And then we can do it with earth. So um, related to the task that Hercules has to do, the task of the apples uh, in the garden of the Hesperides, there was this tree of life, of knowledge, that it has these apples of gold, made up of gold, that represent the wisdom. So now relate this tree of life with your own genetics, with your body. So you are the tree, and these apples are the chakras, the attributes that you have inside. So the dragon is the kundalini taking care of this, of this tree. And then the ego is the hero that comes and tries to take away this, um, these apples from the tree and to kill the dragon, which is to kill the, um, to kill the energy, the vital energy, and the ego, which is the knight, it comes and take it away, take the power away. So what we have to do is to restore this connection so the knight can come, bring the apples to, uh, to the tree again to take care of it and to look the dragon into its eyes. I don't know if it was a lot, but... I think I said it all. So what we are going to do today, because it's the Taurus day, is that we are going to activate this dragon for it to surround us with its wings. Hmm? Um, well. So now if you see or face some draconian or a reptilian, you just tell to them, hey, thank you for taking care of my essence for so long. Now it's my turn. I can handle it. The vibration for today is... The statement for today is, I am the eternal word. So today is a perfect code, which is fire in its aspect of spark. In the origin of everything, when the first particle ignited, enlightened, the spirit originates and with, and with it all the potentialities of creation. This was called the divine spark, the instant where the spirit lighted in the cosmos. For that, the spark is the vital force that generates all things and from which its reflection flashes within every projected beam. It is the first aspect of fire's trinity. How was for you to do the alignments by yourself? We have to practice every day a little bit more. We have to learn how to flow, how to imagine, not judge what we can do. So uh, two things before we start with alignment. The first one, if you are of those people that in these days have been like, like uh, even better than when I guide the, the, the alignments, so you got to connect really deep and, and, and a lot. So perfect. Keep doing that. And um, whenever you can, just try to do it alone. Hmm? Try to do it by yourself even more. If you like to do it with us, of course. Um, but try to do it another moment, um, another times, just by yourself. That's the goal, to, to be able to do that by your own self. And for those who, who cannot and needs still me to, to guide you, <clears throat> I would recommend you to do this. That it doesn't matter the day and where you find yourself in the day, 
just take five minutes to sit, to listen to the music, just focus in the breathing. And when you start to breathe deep, just let for five minutes the imagination to take you wherever and use your imagination. Try to imagine whatever. Doesn't matter that you follow what we are doing in the alignments, the topics, doesn't matter. Just allow the mind to be used to handle the imagination, okay? So just that and practice that. For the people that, that are uh, starting to follow this, just watch the other transmissions, of course. And for the people that have never meditated before, uh, just I would advise you to follow these alignments to practice. And um, if you have no idea how to do it because you need, um, you never did it and you lose the focus, just try to, to practice with something that is mechanic. So don't start by meditating like this. Just, for example, um, paint like a book of mandalas while, while, while you listen to a music. So, <clears throat> so you just paint something that you don't have to think about, something that you just to, to follow, like a pattern, um, or also go outside to walk, but without any purpose to go somewhere. You just go and get lost, just looking the steps that you give. You only see your steps, not what is around, just your steps and take a walk doing that listening to music so your brain starts to get ready to what it is to get into meditation and also the music of the alignments we are not going to post it in instagram or youtube um uh, sorry and spotify until next year because what we are trying to do with this music is for everyone to follow the the same vibration every month so we don't get lost with other vibrations of the month so we can all go aligned okay so let's go to this sit comfortable we close our eyes We focus in our own breathing. the center of this cosmos. I become aware of the environment that I find myself in right now. And I use my imagination to design this environment as the deep space dark, profound,
as I picture myself as the earth levitating in this space. I use my imagination as I start to perceive the shine, the shining stars. Writing more and more, filling up the space as I can see the constellations around me. I see how the light of all these stars are reflecting, projected on me. And as I receive this light, I reflect it towards the, uh, towards the outer space. And it's there where I become aware that all the lights that I see in the sky are just a projection of my own idea, my reflection of my thoughts, emotions, from my soul, from my being. And this is how all, this, all the stars are just telling me the stories of myself through time and space. As I observe the sky with my two eyes, one in the east, the other one in the west, right and left, the sky observe me through the eyes of the earth in the north pole and the south pole. I recognize that I see the sky with the eyes of the ego, with the eye. But if I look above or below, I will see the self, the I am, through the eyes of the sky, through its eyes. And it's there where I find the eyes of the dragon. As I look above, I can see a dragon made up with stars and looking straight to its eyes, I can feel that it's made with all my fears and potentials. It's only me, my own decision to decide if this dragon will watch me through the eyes of fear or the eyes of potential. Take a deep breath and perceive how this dragon is coming down in a spiral around the body, surrounding you, going to the south, reaching the feet
I recognize myself as the tree with all these apples and fruits representing the wisdom, the love and will. And I allow the dragon to come to me, rising up, watching deep within myself through the tree. As I start to, de to breathe deeper and faster, I allow this dragon to come, igniting with its fire all my body, letting myself transcend, cleaning all the old things, and restoring the fruits as it surrounds it to start a new cycle, going up. As I breathe deep, I perceive this dragon becoming my own self and expanding its wings as this torus around my entire self. Take a deep breath and I start to vibrate as I expand and activate the attributes of this dragon in me. I ignite the heart of the dragon in me, irradiating the light of myself towards the stars, the truth of my inner self. I am the eternal word. I am the eternal word. I am the eternal word. I no. Take a deep breath and each one at its own time, come back here and now.
thank you everybody for having accompany me in this path of this week of the mind of Aquarius and as always see you tomorrow at the same time to begin with our week of the emotional of Aquarius. Thank you for being there.